I think the, um, the subject that's on everybody's mind is, is about what happened in the ballgame uh, this week and uh, with DeMar and, and all that. Um, that really sent a real shockwave through all of all of the football world and, and uh, followers and fans and family and loved ones um, alike. Um, and so what we're, we're all trying to send is much support and love and, and whatever we can with the prayers and whatever we can with, with you know, our considerations of how we can help out um, as an organization, as individuals and all that. And, you know, the thing that we, uh, we met t this morning on uh, to talk about it so that we could see where, where the players were coming from, I got around to a bunch of guys before that meeting to try to just see what, you know, what has taken place and where we were and, and all and, and uh, before addressing the group. And um, just a couple things that were really fundamental about it is that well, we're fortunate that, that you know, their, DeMar's life was saved on the field. Uh, and, and so that's, how could that possibly have happened? Well, it's because how organized and how structured we are to try and be there for whatever the needs are in, in terms of supporting, you know, all the health issues that can take place. And it's just fortunately that that was available and, and we we're able to do that. Um, and then, you know, we're just holding on daily as everybody is to see what the next report is and what comes out of, um, you know, out of the hospital and all that. And, and uh, but it was really important, I think, for us to recognize that everybody went through a first time experience kind of, you know, at the same time. And we responded and reacted uh, as players and coaches and people were really tied to the game. Um, and, and it was a dramatic moment in, in, in all of the trauma. And... Uh, we also found out that, that all of our families also reacted too, and everybody got immediately got phone calls from moms and dads and grandpas and aunts and uncles and and loved ones and all of that, just trying to share the moment and see what you know what just happened and what do we think and all that. And so, um, I think respecting the fact that people see it in, as through their own eyes for the first time and and they they have a response to it that we need to be there for them and 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 be available is in every way that we can to you know, make it to the next step that we take together. And, and uh, so, um, you know, fortunately our organization is all of our, you know, our clubs, they've got people that work with our players and, and help them address the issues and concerns and, and, and uh, coaches do the same because we care about, it's like treating your kids. How would you treat your kid? You talk to them about it and try to work them through it and uh, make sure that we really emphasize that people don't hold it back and don't try to avoid it and bury it somewhere any more than they, you know, than, than how they can handle it. Any other way, we would like to talk about stuff and get through it. So anyway, that's the, that's the mode that we're in. And um, so uh, it couldn't be more trying and difficult and all of that. And I know it challenges all of us, even the guys that are parents in here, you know, challenges the parents and certainly, and, and um, I'm hoping that we're able to do this together and stay connected on it. And, and uh, one of the things that immediately happened with our players is they went right to, right to group texting and, and talking about how much they appreciate one another and how much they love each other and how much they, I'll be there for you and all of that uh, was the immediate response that happened uh, with our players. And so, um, this, you know, hopefully we're doing this really well. And we, our best of wishes to the family and, and uh, the Hammonds and the whole crew. And so um, that's where we are on that. Pete, how have the players, how are they now emotionally? And how are they? Well, um, they're, they're being the way that they are. You know, everybody's a little bit different about it. But um, what we're trying to address is uh, is the reality of the game that we're involved with and, and we've all bought into playing this game we've built our whole lives around it and whereas you know we always know that there's risks we're not always faced the, the the reality that the risks are there and this moment does remind us to do that again uh, and and to realize that uh, this is a dangerous game that we play. I, I made the point to the players that there's a lot of people that work in this world that have, they, they carry their, their business in dangerous settings and, and it's, it's difficult and, and there's, you know, there's risk involved too. We're not the only one that's doing that. We're not, you know, like we're the, the only ones that understand that. There's a lot of people that do. And in that, that's the choices that we make, you know, and we make this choice and we make this to take on this risk. And uh, it's why it's so important that we do it together and you have people with you and we, we understand we're all in this thing and we're going to try to, you know, navigate our way to, to make it as good as we possibly can. So um, the, 
they're in different places, but yet they're, they, they want, and they want to recognize exactly what needs to be recognized in the reality, but they also want to keep moving and they want to go. Um, this is the game that we've chosen and, and the life that we've chosen. So um, that's kind of where it is. What was the meeting like uh, with them, with Dr. Dresner? Did you feel like the players needed the reassurance of the protocols? Yeah, I thought it was necessary to have him there and available. And so he, he gave a presentation to him and, and uh, um, and you know, we again made the, the the point that he's there to talk to and call, and if, if anybody has questions and all that, um, it was really good to have him there and have the authority. And you know, John Dresner's got such a wealth of background, and particularly in the area, um, it was great to have him on, on call. We, you know, our other people around the building too that are there in the meeting as well uh, for you know any kind of support help that our guys need, and we just made that point again to him. We see the manifestation of the risks the risks and dangers that you just talked about, that they're kind of under the surface most of the time. Is it, is it going to be hard to put that out of their mind and play football right uh, In a natural sense, some people are going to have it in their minds more than others. Um, yeah, we, we do get, we do get comfortable in a sense with the risk. You know, we, we've been doing this thing for a long time. and. and uh, you know, I don't think it's we turn a blind eye to it, but yet, um, and, and think about all of the things that have come to light in, in you know recent years. You know, I mean, I mean, our thing here about get your head out of tackling. You know, to to make it safer. We're doing everything we can to make the game safer, and the game is changing. It's an adapting game, and and uh, for all of the right reasons. And um, this is just another reminder of the you know the humanity of, of what's going on. And I don't even know if that's a word, but uh, you know the. the that there's people under those helmets playing the game, and, and they they have a lot at risk, and and uh, but we we also we made the choice, and, and that's it's an important re recognition for us. You've always talked about treating players as individuals, and not everyone's the same. How important is that in a moment like this, where not everyone is going to process? Yeah, John, I think that's exactly what I'm. One of the first things I go to is that you know that not everybody's going to take it the same, and they're going to deal with it differently. And so let's try to be respect respectful for all of the differences that people have. And I got to get them to speak up. You know, that's that's the main thing is to call them out. To, you know, we have places to go and people talk to your coaches. Players working with players is a really important thing that we made a point about too. You know, use your friends, use your guys. You know, and, and let's let's get through this. You know. Carter Lockett's probably the most serious injury you guys have had here. You think back to a Hank Gather situation, that sort of thing. What kind of circumstances, instances do you draw upon, think about when, in a moment like this and how to handle things and move forward? And yeah, one of the the most dramatic ones I was at the Jets with, uh, with Dennis Bird that happened on the field and he was paralyzed on the field, you know, and, and uh, that was and just the whole follow up of that, you know, and how we handled it and dealt with the families and everybody and the, you know, and the fans in New York and all that. So that was a really incredible time of, you know, first time things one day after another, you know, and and uh, I know as Dennis recovered, started to recover and showed signs, you know, that uh, it just was so inspiring to everybody. And I'm sure, you know, that this could happen in this case as well, because the, the whole the at least our world is watching, you know, and we're just all pulling for them. And it can be a, you know, significant inspiration for all of us, you know. And I mean, think about how much he's competing right now. He's battling, you know, and so that's, that was kind of what, that was part of that experience there. We talk about sports as being an agent for social change, but back to what you were just saying about the, the way that people have come together, what else have you seen from the reaction of a fan base worldwide, people just kind of talking or showing more empathy or compassion or kindness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and again, unfortunately, it has an occurrence like this takes place and it, and it rocks our world a little bit, but I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's life and it's, it's the truth and so we have to deal with it. Um, I, I know that like just in people seeking to support his causes or anything they could to reach out and he's raised an extraordinary amount of money and in, in, in his, his GoFundMe. Um, um, you know, attempt and it's, you know, it's over five million bucks or something like that. On something he had a goal of, I think, twenty five hundred dollars. You know, so uh, just people reaching out to do what they can. And and there's going to be other things. That we're going to learn that there'll be other things we'll learn to understand in how to support um, Demar and his family and all of that. Um, and and even anything related to this, you know, to this occurrence and the cardiac part of this thing and all that. So we'll learn and we'll grow and and uh, hopefully we'll gain gain ground and, and you know keep it from happening. Uh, cross pass with tomorrow, like before the draft or anything like that? No, I don't, I don't recall if I have. I don't know that. Were you watching the game the other night? Yeah, but I, I, yeah, it was it was happening. I was doing a few other things at the same time, yes. How soon after you 
had sort of understood the seriousness of it, did you start reaching out to either players or, or coaches or party groups? Well, we were all, you know, the coaches were all here. So we, we really, it was, everybody's out in the hallways and stuff like that, talking and kicking it around and, and trying to understand what just took place, you know, and, and what it all meant and all of that, you know. And it, it was, it wasn't with the players, it was with the coaches and immediately. <laughs> You guys have always worked with you know youth football with the tackling things like that. Dr. Dresner touched on this, but the importance of at the younger levels having the AEDs, having the training, just yeah, it it just it, it it screams for a new awareness, you know, a new awareness of and, and it's not just football, you know, all the sports. Baseball is a is a is a big concern, and I, I know. Uh, Anything where we're throwing things like the uh, lacrosse and those games, you know, that with the balls flying, it's a hard ball that, that, that can, you know, make the kind of contact that, that can cause this. That's if that's what happened. I don't even know what, I know what happens. But there's a lot of areas where, where we need to pick up our support to make our, you know, our game safe and, and safer and all of that. And, uh, you know, we grow and learn, and, and uh, hopefully this will help us and help us in communities as well, you know, because we got a lot of kids playing sports, and uh, we need to be there for them as best as we can. So the NFL is a tremendous example of why and what you can do and all of that. So I know that they'll, the information is available to what does it take. Um, the resources are really going to be the issue and all of that. So we got to make some big choices. After the, the Dennis Bird game, and even the, uh, what happened with Ricardo Lockett in 2015, what do you remember about what it was like trying to play the first game after that? Was anything stand out about players and their mindset or anything? Yeah, I, I do remember the, the Dennis Bird. We were playing up in Buffalo, and, and uh, I know that uh, Leon Hess was in the locker room with us, the owner, and, and walking around the locker room. And it was a total blizzard we were going to play in. And he was walking around telling the guys, you know, you don't have to play if you don't feel right about it. I, I always remember that, you know. And, and as the competitor side of it, you know, we, we kind of like didn't want to hear that because we were trying to get ready to go and coaches and players and all that. I, but there, that just shows you the, the, you know, the spectrum that you can be on. Um, you know, but... Uh, Anyway, we're going to have to, we're dealing with it and we'll figure it out. I don't, I don't know how to give you a good answer there. Any observations about playing this weekend and given the challenge it is to kind of get in that? Uh, I don't, I, I, I think it's pretty uh, collective that the guys are ready to get after it and go and they want to, they want to go play their game. You know, I, I don't think that's anything that should be stated in terms of passing judgment on that. I think this is what, what our guys know to do and our coaches know to do. And I think guys go back to work in the workplace too. You know, you go back and you go do what you got to do and, and all of that. Um, doesn't mean that we don't feel it. Doesn't mean that we don't have thoughts, just like you're saying. Doesn't mean we don't carry, you know, conscience about it in, in the, in the game, you know, and all that. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. And, um, so, yeah, we're, we're going back at it. Did you get a sense that players were reassured with the meeting with Dr. Gresner and all of that today? Or um, just by the general response and just kind of in and around our guys. I mean, it's only been half an hour, you know, so, uh, but I, I think it was helpful. And, and uh, we weren't looking for answers. We were just looking for kind of just some solace in, in all of this, I think. And, and uh, so. When it comes to uh, pension, and long-term disability. I know those things are addressed in the CBA, but does a moment like this make you think about those things and, and how maybe more needs to be done in those areas? Um, you know, you're going to put me on a topic here, okay? Um, to me, um, I think I'll get to this. To, to me, the, this game, the, the NFL, professional football, has always been about the players. And, and, I, I, and it's always because they're the ones, that, without them, there's no game. You know, and uh, and they're the ones that 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 play it for all of the reasons they do, but also with the risks that are involved and with the, the long term concerns that they don't know about when they're young and they think that they're going to you know be healthy and, and, and forever. You know, uh, the conscience to understand in in a game like this how responsible we should be to the players uh, over not just while they're playing and creating a safe environment as possible, but the extended support that we we go with them because they without them they, this it, it doesn't exist and it, and I know that um, you know there's a lot of stories about guys after they're finished playing there's there's concerns and issues and getting their life back in order and and, and you know getting back on a good track and all that kind of, there's so much there that uh, and the league does a tremendous amount of things in support of but personally, I feel like we've never respected them as much as they, they deserve. I, I've always felt like you know, we are, owe them everything. We owe them everything for the rest of their life because those guys are limping around and they're, they're getting out of bed in the morning and they can barely move and stuff like that because of the game that they chose to play. They chose to play it. 
I just like taking the responsibility for following our guys along and doing whatever we can. And so I would always just challenge there's more to be done. You know, I know the league has a big conscience about this. I, I just would like to take care of our guys forever and owe, and owe them uh, for the right reasons for all that they've put forth and, and they've risked. And, because it isn't just over. You know, they don't walk away from this game and it's done. It's not like that. There's a lot going on after that. And, and uh, you know, the, these guys deserve a lot of love and, and care. And so. I don't have an idea what you asked. That's my answer. Are we talking football today or are we just going to keep it on this subject? Can I ask a football question? Sure. Let's, we, okay, like, as we did, you know, let's go to business and let's do our stuff to move ahead and, and we'll keep coming back to it as much as, whatever you got question-wise, I'll do whatever I can to address it. But if you want to do football, feel free. You talk about love and concern. What do you hope the fans show to Bobby when he's back in the field? Oh, yeah, they're, they're going to be... They're going to be great. They they, they love him. They, they're, I think they're going to welcome him back. I just think that's what will happen. And then if he makes a tackle or something, then maybe they don't give him as much love. You know, I don't know. He's going to make some hits in this game. Uh, he's playing good ball and, and doing good stuff. But um, I, I, you know, they'll do the right thing. Whatever it is, they'll do it. What, what have you thought of his – you alluded to it there, but what have you thought of this season? What are you seeing from him? Uh, he's, um, I don't know, 120-some tackles again. Here he goes again. You know, I, I'm not sure the exact number, a couple picks. Uh, he's got six sacks. You know, it's a, that, I don't remember him ever getting that many sacks. He has rushed a lot in their system. Um, so I, where it's been a challenge, you know, you know, going there and, you know, following last year and all that stuff, I think he's probably been a real steady voice for them and, and factor for them. I, would, I can't imagine him being anything but that. Is D. Eskridge going to get back to practice for you this week? No. How's Tyler doing? Uh, he's still sore. He's not going to be able to. We're going to hold him out today. He won't be able to go today. Um, so it'll be a day-to-day -day thing uh, for him as far as practice, but I know he's determined to play. He, he, Ryan Neal and Abraham Lucas, and were uh, yeah, Abe, Abe was in the walkthrough today. Abe's going to practice today. Um, I was with Ryan this morning. He, he's not ready today, uh, but he's making improvements. Um, same with with uh, Travis Homer, making improvements, but it's going to be a race against the clock here to see if they can make it, and we'll, we won't know until the end of the week, most likely. How does the Rams' offense look different with Baker at quarterback? Um, yeah, we're we're really seeing you know Sean's offense. You know they they he's done a great job. I mean he, I'm talking about the coaches have done a great job to make this transition. You go back to the Raider game, which is nobody could imagine how that could have happened, but they pulled off a, you know a historic miracle game. Um, but they did it by going right back to the basics. They have great they have a great system. And it's a great coaching staff, and that's they've proven that. And and uh, so they have a wealth of things, that, and they've adapted to the different quarterbacks that have played, even starting you know with, with uh, Stafford. And so, um, I, we re I recognize what they're doing. You know, we've seen it before and seen how they do their stuff, and and uh, have a lot of respect for it. Anything else? Thank you.